All right, in this video, we're going to talk about remembering the structures and functions of the endocrine system. So we're going to combine both learning the structure and the function of both. The endocrine system, like I've told you in the past, all it is is a group of glands that are in the body, in the human body, that secrete hormones, which have target cells. The essential questions are what are the structures of the endocrine system and what are the functions? The endocrine system is simply a regulatory system that contains glands that secrete hormones. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much what it is. You have all these glands throughout the body from head to toe, well, head to pelvic area, um, that will secrete certain hormones to maintain the body's homeostasis, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about each one of these. All right, glands. What is important about the structure of a gland? Number one, a gland is ductless. It doesn't have anything that it's going to travel down or any type of highway. It simply is secreted to the tissue that is around it. Um, what do glands do? Glands are organs that produce hormones and they're regulated by our nervous system. So the structure of glands, understanding that they have no ducts that are going to allow hormones to go down a highway or a pathway to a certain area, but glands do an important thing of producing hormones that, regulate, that are regulated by our nervous system. So let's talk a little bit more about hormones. What are they? First of all, they're chemical messengers that regulate our body's homeostasis. They originate from things such as amino acids, peptides, and steroids, okay? They only act on specific target cells. So they only have specific friends, I guess you could say. And again, these hormones are gonna be regulated and as to how they're secreted or how many are secreted or at what rate they're secreted. They're gonna be regulated by the nervous system, specifically the, para, um, the excuse me, the sympathetic nervous system. Um, the sympathetic nervous system is more related to the emotional changes and emotions that will cause the release of hormones. An example of that is adrenaline, which we'll talk about later. Um, <clears throat> there's something called negative feedback. Negative feedback is when you have a drop in hormone levels in your body, which will trigger the nervous system to release more of that hormone and will also let the glands know to produce more of those hormones. It's what we call negative feedback within the endocrine system. Um, so that can happen as well. So hormones, again, they're going to be chemical messengers. They originate from amino acids. They only act on specific cells and they're going to be regulated by the nervous system, <clears throat> primarily the sympathetic nervous system. And then just understanding that there is a little emergency response that we have that's within our endocrine system that's called negative feedback. And if we ever drop the amount of hormones that we should have in our body, it will trigger the release of more and production of more. The first gland we're going to talk about is the pituitary gland. It is the master gland. It is the one that is consider the one that does the most. Um, it is going to be located in your brain, in the central part of your, of your brain, right there at the base near what we call the brain stem. This is the brain stem right here, and the pituitary gland is going to be located right here next to the brain stem. The pituitary gland has both posterior portion of it and an anterior, so it actually has two parts to it because it is so important. And the reason that you need to know that is because the anterior pituitary gland secretes certain hormones and the posterior pituitary gland secretes other hormones. So you kind of have to know that it does have a division. And we'll talk about which um, pituitary gland secretes what, okay? Again, located at the base of the brain. It's about the size of a grape and it's considered the master gland. Two parts, anterior and posterior. All right, so let's talk about the anterior part first. So the anterior part secretes all these beautiful hormones. You've got your adrenocorticotropic hormone, which supports the adrenal gland. You have your follicle stimulating hormone, which is important in the production of estrogen in women and sperm in men. You have a luteinizing hormone, which is important in the ovulation cycle and the testosterone that's produced in men. And then of course the growth hormone is also secreted by the anterior pituitary gland, which allows you to grow and develop. Um, from a baby, tiny little infant, all the way up to adulthood. Prolactin is more important for females who have just given birth. This is a hormone that is released from the anterior pituitary gland that produces breast milk. And then you've got your thyroid stimulating hormone, which is known as your TSH, which is a specific type of hormone that's going to help support your thyroid gland. And we'll talk more about that in just a little bit as to what the thyroid gland does. So these are all the hormones that are secreted by the um, anterior pituitary gland. 
The posterior pituitary gland it doesn't do as much. It's located towards the back. It does have a um, hormone called vasopressin that it secretes, which helps convert ADH. And remember, we learned what ADH was when we talked about the urinary system. That's called your antidiuretic hormone, which helps us hold on to water and that type of thing. And then last but not least, important to all these females who are pregnant and want to deliver their babies, oxytocin is a hormone that is secreted by the posterior part of the pituitary gland that brings on those contractions for childbirth to allow the baby to come out into the world. So this is your posterior, vasopressin and oxytocin. Now it's important that you know what each of these hormones do, and it's also important that you know which part of the pituitary gland they're secreted from, okay? Now let's talk about the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is interesting. It's right over the trachea, um, which you can see here. Here's your trachea and here's your larynx or your voice box. It's located right here over the trachea. It's in the butterfly shape. It kind of looks like a butterfly. Um, and of course, like we said, located over the larynx or over the trachea. This thyroid is going to play an important um, component in metabolism. And that means, you know, how much you weigh, how much you don't weigh, whether you can lose weight, how much weight you're gaining. This is going to be um, real important. And that's why when people start having excessive weight gain, they'll go have their thyroid checked. Um, and of course, we'll do thyroid level checks <clears throat> to make sure that their metabolism is normal. The two hormones that are important to remember with the thyroid gland are thyroxine and calcitonin. Thyroxine regulates the glucose in our body and calcitonin helps lower calcium levels. If calcium levels get too high, sometimes it can cause problems with other systems. So it is important that those two hormones help to regulate <clears throat> those two elements. Again, thyroid, important to remember, butterfly shape, where it's located, usually over the trachea, right under the larynx. And of course, the two are thyroxine and calcitonin. Two important hormones. All right, your next one is your parathyroid glands. These are gonna be located on the posterior portion of your thyroid gland. So you can't see it unless you lift up that thyroid gland and look up underneath it. There are small little dot-shaped structures that secrete specifically parathormone, which really works with calcitonin to increase calcium in the blood. This is important when we're talking about elderly patients who develop osteoporosis and they have that decrease in calcium within the blood, which can make their bones weak and brittle. This is important when we're talking about that. We always wanna make sure that their calcitonin is being secreted to allow that increase in calcium in the blood. Again, there are four of them. They're located posterior, that means behind, the thyroid gland, and they're about the size of a grain of rice. So they're very, very small little structures. There's usually one ant that's up top on each side and then one that's on the bottom of each side. Again, you could not see this from an anterior view on a patient. You would have to lift up that gland and look underneath it. So it secretes that parathormone, which works with calcitonin to increase calcium in the blood. Super important with bone, with bone health. The next one is the thymus gland. This one isn't, doesn't do as much. In fact, it, it actually starts out kind of large as a child, but again, as you get older and older, it kind of gets smaller and smaller. Its main important job is to secrete thymosin, which um, makes T lymphocytes. And if you remember this, T lymphocytes, remember lymphocytes are white cells. They're white blood cells that help fight off bacteria. So this gland is going to be not only important to the endocrine system, but also the lymphatic system or our immune system in order to fight off diseases or infections. So its main function is to secrete thymosin. Again, we've already talked about where it's located when we talked a little bit about the circulatory system. It's located right under the sternum, which is that bone, that center plate bone where the ribs um, attach to, near the heart. So it's located kind of near the heart. And like I told you, it starts kind of large as childhood, but then kind of gets smaller and smaller with age. But thymosin is going to be the important hormone here to remember, making those T cells to help fight off diseases and infections. And this is definitely important to those lymphatic and um, immune system. The next one is the adrenal gland. Um, I'm gonna show you a picture of those real quick on the next slide. Here are your adrenal glands. They're located right above your kidneys. Remember we talked about kidneys last week in the urinary system. Well, they have these special glands on top, okay? And they, if we were to trans, if we were to cut this gland anterior and posterior in half, 
So we have an anterior part and a posterior part. You would see this little picture right here. The adrenal gland has two parts to it. It has a cortex and a medulla, kind of like the anterior and posterior portion of the pituitary gland. It has two parts. The cortex is going to be important in secreting these two um, hormones, your corticose and your androgens. And then the medulla is going to be more important in secreting epinephrine and norepinephrine. So I kind of wanted you to do that cross-section of what it looked like first before we start talking about it. So again, there are two adrenal glands because there's two kidneys. There's located one on top of each kidney. There are two layers to the adrenal gland. And like we said, if we were to cut it in half from front to back or anterior to posterior, you would see the adrenal cortex, which is towards the outside, and the adrenal medulla, which is more on the inside. Again, these are important in electrolyte control. This, um, the cortex portion of the adrenal gland is going to secrete corticoids and androgens. And then the medulla is going to be important in screening epinephrine and norepinephrine. The medulla is going to be your real important portion of the adrenal gland that comes into effect when you're being chased by the boogeyman or you're scared or you're running from something of fear or you're trying to get out of a fire it helps with that whole entire fight or flight response where your body kind of takes over and you never really know how strong you are until you've hit that you get that whole gush of epinephrine which comes from the medulla now epinephrine is not going to be something that you secrete all the time obviously you're not always in danger you're not always running from the boogeyman um, but it is something that will kick into effect if you have issues um, that you run into environmentally, that you need to have an increase in heart rate, increase in strength, increase in respiration rate in order for you to get out of a terrible situation. And here again is the picture. Adrenal glands right on top of the kidney, two of them, slice it in half, you have an outer portion and then you have an inner portion. And each one of these portions of the adrenal glands secrete something totally different. Your sex hormones, which or your sex glands, which I think are a little bit easier. Most of you know what these are. The men have testes. Testes are located right up underneath um, the penis or underneath the urethra um, and under the bladder. They're going to secrete the hormone called testosterone. Testosterone is what gives men their hair um, on their face. It gives them their hair on their chest, and it gives them their deep voice. It also helps increase their muscle tone. And of course, also too, it's going to be important in making sperm. So again, it makes everything that makes a male a male. It gives them their hair, gives them their deep voice, gives them those strong muscles that typically are stronger than females, and then also makes the sperm in order to allow for reproduction. So testosterone is the big one there. The next one is, the next sex gland is the female one, which is your ovaries. The ovaries are going to secrete estrogen. Um, which are going to help develop the reproduction organs for females. They're going to give female their breast tissue, um, their excessive breast tissue that men don't have. It also helps with production of pubic hair and axillary hair, that stuff, that annoying stuff that females have to put up with. Um, and then, of course, the second hormone, um, the ovaries actually secrete more than one as opposed to the male. It secretes um, progesterone. Progesterone is what is important in nourishing the lining of the uterus after an um, egg has been fertilized and implanted into the uterus for a baby to be grown. So two important um, hormones here are going to be estrogen, which makes female female, gives them their breast tissue, their hair, and gives them those reproduction organs. And then also it secretes progesterone, which is important in nourishing that lining of the uterus so that we can fertilize that egg and allow for a baby to grow in the uterus. Last but not least is the pancreas. The pancreas is located behind the stomach. We've talked about this organ in the digestive system. It's both an endocrine or endocrine gland and an exocrine gland. The endocrine portion of the pancreas is called the islet of Langerhaus, which is really important. It helps regulate energy. Again, the endocrine portion of the pancreas is known as the islet of Langerhaus, and it's important in regulating energy. It also helps secrete insulin, which regulates glucose in the body, as we've talked about before when we talked about the digestive system, and it also helps regulate fats, amino acids, and protein synthesis as well. So super important there. So don't forget about the important hormone of insulin. Remember, insulin is not an enzyme, it's a hormone um, secreted by the islet of Langerhaus. This is the endocrine portion of this gland. Remember, it's also part of the digestive system, so don't get it confused. 
All right, here's a picture of everything to sum it up for you. I hope this helps a little bit. Again, if you need to see these slides,